Hi. <laughs> Everybody ready for story time? It's, uh, well, don't have a watch on. I think it's 6.30. Um, story time every evening, 6.30 here on Facebook Live with me, Uncle Abs or Uncle Michael. Um, it's the chance for the adults to go and have a glass of wine, a well-earned glass of wine, um, or a cold beer. And the kids all gather around in front of either the phone, the computer, the tablet, um, if you can beam it onto the television, even better. Uh, but this is a chance for mummy and daddy, or your auntie and uncle, or your grandma and your granddad, whoever's looking after you today, you can say thanks for all the hard work that the grown-ups have done, and it's now time for a bedtime story. I know it might be a little bit early for bedtime for some of you, um, but some people are watching over in America, so everyone in America, hello. Um, anyone in Australia, hello, everyone who's watching in Australia. Um, a special mention to Olivia and Paige, who are with my cousin Eva in Sydney. So hello to you guys. Um, another mention to Etty, not Etta, I think I said hello to Etty yesterday, um, who's with Sienna and Bandit and Algae. And Etty is, is Bandit still asleep? You sent me a nice photo of Bandit that was asleep. Bandit is a dog and that's why he was asleep. Um, and also hello to Monkey Dave and Hugo who are tuning in. Um, let's see who else is there. We'll give you some shout outs first thing before we get into it. And um, we're going to be reading The Lioness and the Mouse this evening. So get set and ready for that. Um, Charlie Flavel, hello. Good to see you. Sylvie, listening from France. Bonjour. Comment ça va? Um, comment dit story time en français? Um, le même mot? Je ne sais pas. Um, Alex Hay is watching with the kids as well. AJ. Um, some England hockey boys there tuning in. Good to see you. Hope the kids are ready. Uh, this is a chance for the adults to go away, have a cold beer. Um, Audrey and Emily, hello to you. Watching with Sarah. Um, I know you'll be excited for this one. We've got Hattie and Josh who are also tuning in with Alex. Um, and I think it's time to settle in for story time. So adults, time to leave the room. Time to go and have a well-earned glass of wine or a, a nice cold beer. You've earned it and uh, kids gather around because today we're reading The Lioness and the Mouse. Here we go. <clears throat> this is another one that's been retold by Aesop. So uh, everybody sitting comfortably. Here we go. Simba was tired. Of course she was. So would you be if you got up before dawn to hunt breakfast. Especially if breakfast turned out to be very fast on its feet and ran away from you. Simba had chased the zebra for mile after mile across the dusty plain before making the kill. Then she had dragged it all the way back home to her waiting cubs. It was a dog's life being a lioness. As usual, each cub wanted the lion's share. I want the leg! I want the leg! shouted the first cub. You always have it! It's my turn! shrieked the second. He's got more than me, yelped the third. More, 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 screamed the fourth. It's not fair, it's not fair, it's not fair, squeaked the fifth. She was quite right. <laughs> it was never fair. Oh, shut up, roared Simba. You're behaving like a lot of spoilt children. Just remember that you're lions. It's all good meat and there's plenty for everybody. So... Not another murmur. After that, the cubs were as quiet as mice, which was very sensible because their mother was a lioness after all, and she had huge paws and razor sharp claws. Right, you lot, growled Simba. As soon as they had finished, Mummy's going to have a rest and she doesn't want to be disturbed. So run along and play among yourselves. And remember, no squabbling. She yawned and her co cubs could see right inside her carnivorous mouth. It was lined with two rows of enormous pointed teeth. Don't you argue with teeth like that, thought the little cubs. And off they ran to play. Simba padded down to the waterhole for a long refreshing drink then she settled in the long grass in the shade of the great tree. Ah, peace and quiet at last. Lions just don't realise how much we lionesses have to do, she thought, as she began to doze. 
It's all very well for lions just lying around all day and all night too, as often as not. Her lion was like that. Just because of the great mane and the beard, he thought he was too good to help with the cubs. But she was much too exhausted to bother about all of that for as long and soon she fell asleep into a deep sleep. We got there. <laughs> The mouse was tired too. Oh, hello. Look, there's the Simba and all the cubs, all just having a quick snooze. And then they've spotted a mouse. Well, mouse was tired too. He had spent the night running away from Owl, who had already eaten his mother, father, sister, brother, and his great aunt. Squeak! It's a dog's life, being a mouse. Well, that's what the mouse thought as he crept through the long grass into the shade of the great tree. The soft, warm, golden, furry heap he burrowed into was just what he'd been looking for. The perfect place to lie on, murmured the mouse as he made himself all snug and comfortable. He was just beginning to drift off into a sleep when something rough, sharp and very powerful seized him oh, right by the throat. Simba was dreaming of a magical world where lionesses didn't have to do any work at all and lions did all the work instead. The lionesses lay about sleeping and playing games. It was a delightful dream and she had not at all pleased to be woken up. She was very grumpy. When she saw what was in her paw, she could hardly believe her eyes. A mouse, a tiny little mouse on a great lioness. The mouse was terrified. Oh dear, squeaked the mouse. I'm, 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 I'm most terribly sorry. Sorry, roared Simba. Sorry, you snivelling little rodent. I'll make you sorry, all right. She raised her other paw. It would soon be all over for the mouse. No, mighty Simba, I beg you, don't do it. It was all a dreadful... Mouse steak. A mouse steak. Like a mistake, but a mouse take. <laughs> mouse take, mouse take. Thought I was dead, did you? Well, listen to me, young man. Even if I were dead and stuffed full of straw in a natural history museum, you should show respect. And I mean respect to me, a great lioness. You've no excuse. Oh, Simba, Simba pleaded the mouse, who was ready to try anything. You're much too important to bother with a wretched little thing like me. In any case, I'm sure I'll taste disgusting. Simba screwed up her face like a great cat's face, like this. Meow. Me, eat you, eat a mouse. Ugh. Lioness don't eat mice, young man. They eat antelope and zebra and cattle. Besides, I'm not in the least bit hungry. Eat a mouse? <laughs> what a load of mouse trap. I mean, clap trap. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, cried the mouse, more desperate than ever. Uh, please, please, please don't kill me. Since my life is worth nothing, my death is worth even less. And if I live, who knows? I may be able to help you one day. Simba roared again, only this time with laughter. Ha 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 ha! Ho 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 ho! Ha 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 ha! You help me, that's rich, a mouse helping a lioness. Now I've heard everything. She looked at the tiny creature clamped in her paw and there was a twinkle in her smouldering brown eyes. There she is. Look how tiny the mouse is, in the big lion paws. <laughs> so she looked at the tiny creature, lamped in her paw, a mouse to help a lioness, she thought. Now I've heard everything. She looked at the tiny creature and there she was with her smouldering brown eyes. Go on then, scarper before anyone sees you. 
It would ruin my reputation if it got around that I'd gone soft on mice. Mouse scurried off into the undergrowth, grateful for his escape, but more exhausted than ever. There's just no future in being a mouse, he thought, wishing he were a hundred times the size, like Simba, for instance. But big as she was, Simba was in trouble. As Mouse scurried away, a crack of gunshot echoed behind him. Simba leapt up and the pain and then fell to the ground and she struggled to get up again but felt too weak. She'd been shot by a tranquilizer. As she lay there, unable to move, a group of men came out of the cover of the trees and threw a net over her. She was trapped. Moments later, she fainted. <coughs> when Simba woke, she felt terrible. Her head ached and the net bit into her skin. She couldn't move and when she tried to roar for help, the voice was pitifully weak. Her whole body was sore. They had dragged her a long way. It's all over for me, she moaned. They'll take me somewhere cold and wet and stick me in a smelly little cage. People will bring their children to point at me through the bars and I'll never see my cubs again. Tears sprang into Simba's eyes and rolled down her cheeks. Mouse was out of breath. Oh, phew, he panted. At last, he was the only little mouse and already very tired. It had been a hard work to keep up with all the men and after a few minutes, he got his breath back. Oh, right, he squeaked briskly. There's no time to waste. You just lie there, Simba, and watch this. He began to gnaw at the net. It was made of specially tough rope, but Mouse had specially sharp little teeth. He had soon bitten through all of the rope in several places and Simba managed to get her paws through the holes and do the rest. She was so very grateful, mouse she purred when they were miles away and safe from the strangers. I'm very sorry I laughed at you. It just goes to show that size isn't everything. I don't know how to thank you. Don't mention it. Mighty Simba, don't mention it. And now, if you don't mind, I'd like to go to sleep again. The mouse burrowed deeper into the soft, warm, golden furry heap without a care in the world. And perhaps it wasn't so bad being a mouse after all. The end. So that one was called The Lioness and the Mouse. It was good, wasn't it? Who'd like to hear it again? I can't hear you. Who'd like to hear it again? Okay, if you'd like to hear it again, you have to do this. One more time. One more time. One more time. I, I can't hear you, you need to keep going. One more time. One more time. <laughs> One more time. Okay, Daisy's kids are doing it. Hello, Daisy Turner and the kids. Hi, Denise. We know that you're watching. Thanks for cheering. Okay. We'll have to read it again then, won't we? Woo! No, no shoes today, we've gone barefoot. Okay, well done everyone, well done. We'll read it one more time. So, it's called The Lioness and the Mouse. If you're just tuning in, you haven't missed much. We're going to read the story again. It's about, obviously, a lioness and a mouse. It's a retold story from Aesop. So here we go. Uh, Josh and Coco, <laughs> you can stop doing one more time now. Okay, okay. Mum, my mum is watching. Helena, okay, enough is enough. Okay, settle in. Is everybody sitting comfortably? Here we go then. Hi Lucy, yes, yes, yeah. Okay, are we ready? Shh, 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 okay, everyone calm down, calm down, calm down, okay. <clears throat> the lioness and the mouse. Simba, that's the lioness, Simba was tired. Of course she was. So would you be if you got up before dawn 
to hunt breakfast. Especially if breakfast turned out to be very fast on its feet and ran away from you. Simba had chased the zebra for mile after mile across dusty plain before making the kill. Then she had dragged it all the way back home for her waiting cubs. It was a dog's life being a lioness, and as usual, each cub wanted the lion's share. I want the leg! I want the leg! shouted the first cub. You always have it! It's my turn! shrieked the second. He's got more than me! yelped the third. More! 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 screamed the fourth. It's not fair! It's not fair! It's not fair! squawked the fifth. She was quite right though. It was never fair. Oh, shut up! roared Simba. You're behaving like a lot of spoilt children. Just remember that you're lions. It's all good meat and there's plenty for everybody. So, not another murmur. After that, the cubs were as quiet as mice, which was very sensible because their mother was a lioness after all, and she had huge paws and razor sharp claws. Let's see your razor sharp claws. Very good. Right, you lot, growled Simba. As soon as they had finished, Mummy's going to have a rest and she doesn't want to be disturbed. So run along and play among yourselves. And remember, no squabbling. She yawned and her cubs could see right inside her carnivorous mouth. Carnivorous means an animal that eats meat. Carnivorous. Quite a big word, particularly if you're only four or five reading this book. Carnivorous mouth. It was lined with two rows of enormous pointed teeth. You don't argue with teeth like that, thought the little cubs, and off they ran to play. Simba padded down to the waterhole for a long, refreshing drink. Ah, peace and quiet at last. Lions just don't realise how much we lionesses have to do, she thought, as she began to doze. It's all very well for lions. They just lie around all day. And all night, too. <laughs> as often as they can. Her lion was like that. Just because of his great mane and beard, he thought he was too good to help with the cubs. But she was much too exhausted to bother about all of that, and soon she was longing to fall into a deep sleep. Mouse was tired too. He had spent the night running away from Owl, who had already eaten his mother, father, sister, brother and great aunt. Squeak! It's a dog's life being a mouse. Poor mouse. As he crept through the long grass and into the shade of the great tree. The soft, warm, golden, furry heap he burrowed into was just what he'd been longing for. Oh, imagine how cosy that is. If you're under your duvet now, imagine being the mouse. Just get in there nice and cosy. Oh, I bet that feels good. Oh, I bet that feels good. <laughs> so Mouse is happy. This is what he's been longing for. The perfect place to lie on, murmured the mouse out loud as he made himself comfortable. He was just beginning to drift off into a sleep when something rough, sharp and very powerful seized him by the throat. Like this. Simba was dreaming of a magical world where lions did all the work and the lionesses lay about sleeping and playing games. It was a delightful dream and she was not at all pleased to be woken up. When she saw, when she saw what was in her paw, she could hardly believe her eyes. A mouse! A tiny little mouse on a great lioness. The mouse was terrified. Oh dear! squeaked the mouse. I'm most terribly sorry. Sorry? roared Simba. 
Sorry, you snivelling little rodent. I'll make you sorry, all right. She raised her other paw. It could well soon be over for the mouse. No, mighty Simba, I beg you, don't do it. It was all a dreadful mouse take. Like a mistake, a mouse take. Oh, it was a dreadful mouse take. Mouse take? Mouse take? <laughs> I was dead. I thought I was dead. Well, listen to me, young man. Even if I were dead and was stuffed full of straw in a natural history museum, you should show me some respect, said the mouse. And I mean respect to me. Oh, respect, said the lioness. You've no excuse. Oh, Simba, Simba, pleaded the mouse who was ready to try anything. You're much too important to bother with a wretched little thing like me. In any case, I'm sure I'll taste disgusting. Mm, mouse. Ugh. Simba screwed up her face like this, like a great cat's face. Ugh. Me eat you. Ugh. Eat a mouse. Blech. Lionesses don't eat mice, young man. They eat antelope and zebra and cattle. Besides, I'm not in the least bit hungry. Eat a mouse. <laughs> what a load of mouse trap. I mean, clap trap. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, cried the mouse more desperate than ever. Uh, please, 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 don't kill me. Since my life is worth nothing, my death is worth even less. And if I live, who knows, I may be able to help you one day. Simba roared again, only this time with laughter. Ha 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 ha! You help me, that's rich. A mouse, help a lioness. <laughs> Now I've heard everything. She looked at the tiny little creature clamped in her paw. There it is. Poor old mouse. Clamped in Simba's paw. He's tiny. Hmm. So there he is. She looked at him, the tiny little creature clamped in his paw. And there was a twinkle in her smouldering brown eyes. Go on then, Scarpa, before anyone sees us. It would ruin my reputation as a lioness if it got around that I'd gone soft on mice. The mouse scurried off into the undergrowth, grateful for his escape, but more exhausted than ever. There's just no future in being a mouse, he thought, wishing he were a hundred times the size, like Simba, for instance. But big as she was, Simba was in trouble. As Mouse scurried away, a crack of gunshot echoed behind him. Simba leapt up in pain and then fell to the ground. She struggled to get up again, but she felt so weak. She had been shot by a tranquilizer. As she lay there, unable to move, a group of men came out of the cover of the trees and threw a net over her. She was trapped. Moments later, she fainted. When Simba woke, she felt terrible. Her head ached and the net bit into her skin. She couldn't move and when she tried to roar for help, her voice was pitifully weak. Her whole body was sore. They had dragged her a long way. It's all over for me, she moaned. They'll take me somewhere cold and wet and stick me in a smelly little cage. People will bring their children to point at me through the bars and I'll never see my cubs again. Tears sprang into Simba's eyes and rolled down her cheeks. <sighs> Ooh, the mouse was out of breath. Phew, he panted. At last. He was only a little mouse and he was already very tired. He had been very working very hard to keep up with the men and after a few minutes 
he got his breath back. Whew. Ha. <sighs> oh, squeak. Right, he squeaked briskly. There's no time to waste. You just lie there, Simba, and watch this. He began to gnaw into the net. Like this. Good work, Mouse. Well, the mouse made uh, a specially, especially good job of nibbling through the tough rope because mouse had these very sharp teeth. Let's see your mouse teeth, like this. Yeah, yeah. nibble, nibble, nibble. Okay, so he used those sharp teeth and he had soon bitten through in several places. And Simba managed to get her paws through one of the holes to help and do the rest. She was so grateful. Mouse, she purred when they were miles away and safe from the strangers. I'm very sorry that I laughed at you. It just goes to show you that size isn't everything. I don't know how to thank you. Don't mention it, mighty Simba. Don't mention it at all. And now, if you don't mind, said the mouse, I'll go for a sleep again. The mouse burrowed deeper into the soft, warm, golden furry heap without a care in the world. And perhaps it wasn't so bad being a mouse after all. The end. <laughs> Look at that, there is Mouse. All that hard work he did, all that nibbling with his little teeth to help the lioness who was stuck in the net because the hunters had caught her with a tranquilizer. Well done, Max, saving the lioness. So the lioness got to go back to see her cubs. That was good, wasn't it? So that was the lioness and the mouse. And tomorrow night, we'll have another story. Um, okay, little secret, we did this the other day. If there's any grown-ups around, you have to put your fingers in your ears. Fingers in the ears, grown-ups. Okay, good, okay. Now, whoever tucks you in to bed tonight, Give them a big hug and a big squeeze and say thanks very much for all your hard work. I've really enjoyed homeschooling. It's a bit different, I know. <laughs> but well done, Mummy. Well done, Daddy. Well done, Uncle, Auntie, Grandma, Grandad, whoever's looking after you. Give them a big squeeze tonight and tell them that you love them very much. OK, and I'll see you tomorrow for some more story time at 6.30. Thanks very much for tuning in. Uh, adults, you can take your fingers out of your ears now. Okay, that was the secret, shh, 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 our secret. Okay, let me know how it goes. And tomorrow morning, if you fancy drawing a picture of the lioness and the mouse, you can get those colouring crayons out and do a nice picture. You can draw a big lioness and a tiny little mouse and you can tell your own story. So you can do that first thing tomorrow. So uh, good night, everyone. Night to Sam and the kids, night to Alex and the kids, night to mum, <laughs> night to Simon as well, who's been watching. Lots of love, guys. See you all tomorrow. Night, Trev. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Bye. That's Abs's story time. Over and out.